What you doing? Throwing the grubs out into the. <laughs> Hello, everybody. So we're still. You can see him back there. We're still under uh, lockdown in Oregon because of COVID, and we're home, obviously. Hey, why are you talking? I'm talking to the peoples. You want to talk to the people too? <laughs> run away! Run away! We didn't get a uh, what you call it? A garden plot this year um, because we may have some changes after all of this is over coming so we didn't get a garden plot this year but we are still starting our garden just on the patio so that's what we're gonna do today and we're gonna take a look we did use a lot of seeds last year we don't have a whole lot of space as you can see we're going to be very limited on what we can plant but we do have a lot of microgreens that chef wants to grow and we have a lot of herbs. So we're gonna go through all of this right here. I know it's a little messy. Got some dirt and our gardening tools. And I've got an ammo box somewhere around here with all of our seeds in it. So let's try to find that stuff. Oh, look, here it is. Got it, let's take a look. What do we got here? What do we got? Some of these seeds, the ones that we have um, or that are supposed to be frozen. There are some that are in, ah, it's all sticking together. There are some that are in the freezer and then we have all the other ones that are up against our wall in our quote unquote dining room, which you guys might be familiar with when you see it in the outro that I have. You'll see a wall full of jars and stuff. So that's where some of our seeds are. All right, we got some of this stuff. We're gonna get some pots. I gotta empty all this stuff. That's from last year. And we're gonna use some of these over here too. So some of the dirt, this is some of it here. We do have an extra bag. All I did from last year's starter seeds was I took whatever dirt that I would pull off of the roots and I just started collecting it and putting it in um, a bucket. So that's something that you can do when you are starting your own garden so that you don't have to keep buying brand new bags of soil every year if you are doing a similar setup if you have a, an apartment is just uh, saving the the soil for the next time you plant which one which bucket mommy all right so we've got these ones here these plastic ones and then We've got some of these, these are heavy, but they've got these plates that we can use underneath. But they have spiders. <laughs> they do have spiders on them. All right, and then we've got this planter box here that we have to empty all of this stuff and see if we can replenish the soil in it too, okay? Yeah, is that your thing? Huh? And that's mine. That's yours and that's mine right there. What are these two called? Kayaks. That's your kayak, and this is my kayak. Hey, you said you are going to help. My goodness, I just realized we have all of this, too. Holy moly. Thanks for your help, dude. Daddy, what? All right. We got all our gear. Daddy, what? Yeah, I see that. Oh. This is the space that we have. I'm thinking of... I have a couple hooks that we can just screw in to put above here that we can plant stuff in that basket, at least. I'm talking to me or them? You, them, anybody, but you know, whenever I talk, nobody listens anyway, so it's just kind of like getting my thoughts out instead. Nobody cares. One thingy. Huh? Oh, there it is, okay. Let's get it. It's a Charlie rake. Hang on. We gotta get rid of your strollers. Cause yours too big. Oh my gosh. How did I put this in there? first place. I think this is going to be a two-hander kind of thing. Yeah, it is. Hang on, folks. Hang on.
Oh, yeah. All right, let's take a look at what we've uh, got here. I think I did this in a video last year, too. All right, we've got Huckleberry. Obviously, we're not going to do those. Cosmos. Should we do Cosmos? I don't know if we have any more chamomile. Feels like we do on the bottom. Yes, pile. No pile. I'll pick up this, Finny's. Uh, watercress. Mommy, can I pick up the dirt? Salad greens. Romanesco broccoli. I don't know that we'll be able to do that. That might be too big. Uh, oyster leaf. It doesn't feel like we have any Mommy, more in here. Spinach. More spinach. Radicchio. I need to make a maybe pile. <laughs> skull. Oh, and it's got like the spine too, or the cervical. Hang on, wait a minute. Let's see. Oh yeah, there's where the eyes go. That's like the cervical spine there. Although, I mean, yeah, it's really long. Unless this is like the hip of something. No. No? Well, I'm just looking at the way the spine goes all the way down to the bottom. Interesting. Cool. That's a cool skull. Yeah, I'm just going to put it in there. No. There you go. No. No. So this is our blueberry bush, and I might have put this in a video quite a while back, but I found what kind of blueberry it is. It's a high bush blueberry blue crop. And we're able to grow this on our patio. We've had this for, what, two years? Uh, just about. And look at all of the blossoms. So we're gonna get a lot more blueberries this year. All right, this is probably gonna sound a little weird, but if our gloves, or any gloves that have been sitting in a long in a bin for a long time, I like to squeeze them to see if I feel like the, the crack of a bug <laughs> in there before I put my hands in so that I don't get bit or startled. Is that weird? Yes, it is. Weird is fine. No bugs. All right, so okay. we're gonna go ahead and see if we can rescue any of this dirt. The nice thing is what I can do is take this out and just like put it in the bushes here or something because it's all just dead anyways. Oh yeah, see? Look at that. You pull this out and then you've got dirt here. may not have a whole lot of nutrients in it, but we'll have to go buy some later to add to it. Alright, so these are all the yeses. A lot of them are herbs and lettuces, so I'm going to choose the herbs and start planting those first while Chef is going to fix this area. And this one's going to keep digging in places. <laughs> Almost forgot an essential for gardening. Tape and a Sharpie. We've got about these ones that we picked up from the Japanese garden before the pandemic uh, really took a hold. We've got shiso, Japanese basil, and mustard greens. All right, so I've got seven herbs that I'm gonna plant. So I think I'm gonna plant all of those in bins that will go in here. And probably a couple of the flower mixes that we have too. So that they're easy to water. But let's see, I've got the echinacea um, and a nice-like chervil flavor. Indian coriander, English thyme, Korean hyssop, cilantro, and chamomile. Of course there'd only be six that are usable. This one's got a big old hole in it. So I believe most of these you just kind of lay them out 
on the surface and then you lightly cover them because all these seeds are very very tiny seeds so you pretty much just sprinkle them over the top and then just lightly cover them with soil but what I need to do is remember <laughs> what I'm planting in each one so I'm gonna need so speaking of Maxine put out another video the other day We'll have to look at it. All right. What is that? What is that? It's this stuff. Oh. It's so that I can label all of our um, planters. Okay? No. Doesn't care. Let's put that there. And let's do the chamomile first. Interesting. I'm going to do this one handed, but see, there they are. We got quite a few. So. I'm not going to do too many, hopefully. They're not even coming out. Come on, guys. Oh, there we go. Okay. That should be enough. So I'm going to lightly cover these. Charlie? It's not okay. <laughs> Boys! All right. German chamomile is right there. So that's... If I can't label it right away, what I usually do is I like to stick the the package near each one so that I know, and then I can just label them all rapidly in rapid sequence. Not really. Cilantro. Let's try to open this with one hand. Maybe if I stick my belly out, there we go. And there's those little guys. And yeah, it says. Covering the seed up to one quarter to half inch deep. Space plants eight to 12 inches apart. Don't crowd me. Bangarang, Peter. If you guys know what the Bangarang Peter reference is, comment below. You can be my new best friend. <laughs> if you know Bangarang Peter or if you know a gun, let alone many guns that would necessitate an entire rack. Comment below. Okay, next is the Korean hyssop. Wait, do I want to put cilantro grows out like that? I guess I can move them around. It doesn't matter at this point. Okay, let's do the Korean hyssop. Two foot plant. Eh, that's okay. Full sun and rich, somewhat moist, yet well-drained soil. Start plants in containers indoors, covering seeds very lightly and keeping moist until sprouts appear and set out after last frost of spring. Well, we're a little late with that, but that's okay. Actually, I can't say that it would be the last frost because this always ends up happening where it'll be super sunny like this and then all of a sudden, a week later, it's really cold and it ends up frosting all over the state. Best frost is a uh, farmer's Oh, yes. Continue. That's all I got. <laughs> so I'm trying to do this by looking at where I'm. Let's do some more. There we go. Sprinkle, sprinkle. I'm trying to look at the camera and then look at where I'm doing this. Oh, crap. You know what I just did? <laughs> I just planted the Korean hyssop in with the cilantro. <laughs> That's okay, because you know what? The cilantro are little round balls. So I can pick those out. <laughs> That's what happens when I'm surrounded by stud muffins. I get distracted. Yeah. Blur all of this out. <laughs> Aww. Okay, see? Look. Here's how... It's going to take me a while to fix this. But that's what the cilantro looks like so I have to go through and dig those out and put them in here instead. We dig 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 da -da, da -da, da -da. okay what is that one from? In the mine in the mine where a billion somethings chime what's that from? mm-hmm some fan you are <laughs> Okay, I think I pretty much got it. <laughs> hey! Little boy. Hey! Hey, nice yeah. nice haircut. Yeah. Did Daddy cut your hair this morning? Yeah. Uh-oh, careful, careful. Did Daddy cut your hair this morning? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. 
lucky duck. Next, let's do the coriander. The coriander looks similar to the cilantro. See that? Focus. There we go. Okay, I think that should be enough for the coriander. Now you're kind of. Well, you know what? It might be nap time, Daddy. Parenting and chefing and all the things. All right. I'm going to go put the kiddo down for a nap. So I just opened up our Shiso Japanese basil. And look at this. Doesn't it look like copper or like some sort of a gold or something in the soil? Look at that. Right there. You see that? Super shiny. Shiny objects. Lots of shiny little objects in the soil. So these are the seeds. They're definitely a little more... I don't know if those are good. I don't know if that's the way that they're supposed to come. I don't remember those with the other shiso that we had. So we'll see if this works because this may actually be a... a these might be dead. But there's some that are still alive. So we're still going to try it. When plant develops flowers or flower stalk, it's going to seed. Remove plants from garden to avoid plants going to seed and spreading in the garden. That's different because Chef, as you all know, we actually like our plants to go to seed because we collect those seeds and we put them, we put them up here for storage and some of them are actually in our freezer. So we like to let our plants go to seed so we can collect those seeds and plant them for the next season. Just looking at all of these. Look at, aren't they pretty? All of these blooms mean blueberries. Some plants, you can plant them multiple times during the year. So like carrots, uh, beets, things like that. You can let a couple things, a couple of those go to seed and then you can harvest the rest and eat those and then eat the ones well, I just said that, but you, the ones that are, <laughs> I'm getting distracted again. The ones that are, you're letting go to seed, you can take those seeds, let them dry a little bit and then plant them in the ground again. And you can have multiple harvests during, for each year. So it's just something to, to think about, especially during these times when, um, a lot of people are getting laid off or losing their jobs because of the pandemic. So that's, that's a way for you to be able to get the most out of your gardening. All right, I'm gonna put you all up there. You're kind of on the door to the uh, ammo box. Okay, so what I have to do is I have to wet this just a little bit. And let me see here. I might have to go back inside for a minute. So I'm gonna open this up. Actually, I'm gonna cut it. Yeah, I'll be right back. I'm back. This is cut up and I'm going to be right back to fill some water. I've got some water, I've got a spoon. I just realized too that I'm sounding kind of funny with my words right now and I think it's because I, I have a headache. I get really, really bad headaches. If they're not really bad headaches, I get um, very, very bad migraines. Um, and I'll have to look up what type of migraine it is again. I always forget, even though it's like, it's one of the rarest migraines that you can get, but I get these migraines quite frequently, each month actually. Um, and it actually, it has nothing to do with the cycle because I've gotten that taken care of <laughs> so I don't have a cycle each month anymore if you know what that is you know what that is otherwise google it anyways let's get back to our shiso so I'm just gonna try to pour a little bit of water in here okay. they said just to dampen it just enough to dampen it. I don't know if that's enough to dampen Baby steps. Oh, that's... I don't think that's going to be enough. <laughs> Yay, this is so fun, looking at somebody... St 
stirring a bag of dirt. COVID life. Hashtag COVID life. So if you're not aware, or if you, if, you, if you follow us on Instagram and Twitter, you are aware. If you're not, both Chef and I are still working because we are considered essential workers. I work at a level one trauma center here in the city. Um, a level one trauma center basically is like, there's tiers actually in the hospital system. Um, some hospitals, they have a full team ready to go for trauma, for example. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, there's always somebody at the hospital. Um, and that's, that's where I work. You have trauma centers that are also stroke centers in that, and in that they have a full team ready to go 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And a full team meaning when somebody has a stroke, um, they've got CT ready to go. They've got anesthesiologists ready to go. They've got all of the staff, the medical staff, the support staff as well, ready to go in the event that somebody has a stroke. Um, EMTs and paramedics would transport patients to these specific hospitals. How do I know this? I was an EMT <laughs> before I started working at the hospital. And I worked actually um, in California. I'm actually licensed here in Oregon and California as an EMT, national, nationally registered EMT as well. But right now I, I work at a hospital. And uh, so, yeah, so I work at a level one trauma center and children's hospital in the city. So I'm still working. And um, Chef, aside from Illumina and getting this started, this restaurant started, our, our food business started, he is a chef as well for a production kitchen, a large production kitchen. So that's like massive amounts of food that are produced for, for example, airlines or grocery stores, for example, they, they make all the packaged goods and everything. So he does that. He started out working in restaurants as cooks and a sous chef. Uh, in a couple of three Michelin star restaurants. Uh, one of them was a two Michelin star restaurant when, when he was working there. And then right after he left, they, um, they were striving to become a three star and they've been a three star ever since. So he's got quite a bit of um, background in the food industry. He's got a lot actually. So both of us are essential workers and we are still employed. You know, there are concerns over PPE you know, my hospital had the, a concern over PPE um, and still does, but we have found ways to make things work and to try to keep everybody safe as much as possible. But Oregon, Oregon has not been hit as bad as Washington above us and California below us. We're hoping that we can maintain that streak for now. We have had our share. We're over a thousand infected cases. I have to look up the latest update for today. Today is Friday, April 10th, but there are COVID patients in our hospital as well as every hospital in the Portland metropolitan area. And I believe there's, the, yeah, they're in every hospital in Oregon. I, I think maybe like the, the Southeast, there might not be because they get flown in to uh, larger hospitals in the state. That actually happens quite often where, you know, in the more rural areas, a trauma trauma patient will get flown into our hospital. For example, we get, we get people flown in almost every day. So it's a very busy hospital. Okay, now, I've got this all mixed up. It looks pretty, it looks pretty damp. I don't know if you guys can see compared to what it was before. It's pretty damp, so that looks perfect. Now what I have to do is plant the seeds according to the directions below. Keep the mix moist but not wet by sprinkling water over it daily and keep the bag in a warm spot during germination. Oh, okay. Move to a bright sunny spot once the seedlings appear. I'm supposed to keep the seeds in here until they germinate and then I transplant them. Okay, I will do that. Okay, okay. That would be weird. Oh, get 
all of them. I'm gonna get all of them. There's a couple more in here that are being feisty. We put the kiddo down if you're wondering where he is. That's in there. I'm just gonna like gently, there we go. Okay, now that's gotta sit there. So I'm what I'm gonna do too is I'm gonna put a label on the bag here and then just keep the instructions nearby, probably tape it to the bag so that uh, I can pay attention to when I have to transplant them. So it just is a warm spot, not necessarily a sunny spot, but it is organ. Let me show you what we have here on, on our shelf. So we do have grow lamps, a couple of grow lamps that we turn on every day. We turn them on for our other plants, but I'm thinking I can take take the shiso and put it underneath these grow lamps to keep it warm at least. All right, so we've got our herbs all here. I'm gonna try to rescue our basil. This was one of those fresh plants, fresh whole basil plants that you pick up from the grocery store. They don't seem to do too well when they're outside, so I don't know. Um, so now I'm going to do the flowers. Do you remember that song, the Sesame Street? Beat, beat, sugar, beat, beat, sugar, beat, beat. You don't remember that from Sesame Street? No. You're so not cool. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> Can't remember if I showed you guys. We planted hollyhock, uh, some edible chrysanthemum, and two variations of cosmos. <laughs> Oh, I gotta cover these. Do you know what'll happen? If you don't cover them, the birds and the squirrels are going to get them. So we've got this netting. It's a big old thing of netting. It's all bushed up. I'm gonna see if I can somehow put this over some of the babies and then over our shelf in the background there so that the squirrels and the birds don't try to take our seeds or even bury stuff in the soil because a lot of the times they'll do that. What you doing, chef? Giving you dirt. More dirt. What are we gonna put in these ones? Beets and carrots. Beets and carrots. Are we gonna do more? We're gonna do more lettuces and stuff, right? I don't know. If we don't, that's okay. All right, so I looked up the type of migraine that I get. It's a uh, intractable migraine with status migranosis and less than 1% of the population gets this type of migraine. And basically it's a migraine that lasts for 72, 72 hours or longer and nothing really helps it at all. No medications can really make it go away. I think the, the longest migraine that I've had was 11 days. It was either 11 days or 12 days. I can't remember that I've had a migraine. So yeah, they can get pretty bad if I don't stop them before they come or at least try to stop them. So I do have medications for preventative um, migraine situations, but sometimes they'll pop up in the middle of the night and I can't really do anything at that point and it, it'll just sit there for days and days and days so yes so sometimes if you see my face like super super swollen and all that I'm probably in a lot of pain all right all finished let's see what we got miners lettuce various beets and carrots more beets. Oh, that poor basil. I hope I can rescue it. See, look, there's like little babies right there growing. And right there, so hopefully that'll come back. Echinacea, beets, chives. We need to get one more light for the corner here because the light only goes so far. All done. You have to explain to everybody why you chose to plant some of the larger vegetables on this little patio. Because, because I'm gonna pick them early when they're babies. Right. And shape them for themselves. And that's called micro veggies. Micro. Sure. 
Yes, they are. It's just picking them early. That's all microgreens actually means. It's not like they have cultivated the seeds so that they only, well, these ones, so that they only grow a certain height. They're just picking them early. That's all, that's all it is. That's not anything special. I know a lot of people might think, ooh, let's make a microgreen dish. Micro sounds sciency. Honestly, that's all it is, is they're just picking them early when they get to a certain size mm -hmm. and putting them on these teeny tiny upscale dishes. I'm just hungry. Like this? Mm -hmm. Thanks. Hi everyone, thank you so much for watching. But before you go, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below and smash the bell right next to it so you can get notifications of all our new videos. In the meantime, be sure to check out all of our other playlists, Kiki Cafe, Shenanigan Shorts, Illumina Family Travels, and so many more. You can find us on Instagram and Twitter, and coming soon, our own Patreon page. Check us out at Illumina Coquina. Thank you so much for your support.